Hello guys, unveiling collaborations, BYD, Cherry, and EREV. Inside NIO Factory, CGTN explores China EV market and vehicle misconceptions. Today, we will discuss some potential partners. The CEO has mentioned BYD and Cherry again after NIO Day. Watch this CGTN clip, where there will be a deep dive into the NIO factory and we'll also learn about the Chinese new energy vehicle market. Additionally, we will explore why people are buying EREV or hybrids. The NIO CEO posted this on Weibo, expressing gratitude to President Lei Jun, the founder of Xiaomi. He recalled a deep night in January 2013 when they discussed creating the NIO brand and manufacturing electric vehicles. It's a matter of great respect to see Xiaomi and Legend coming forward and producing their EV, he said. Congratulations for bringing better intelligent electric vehicle products for users together. Lei Jun then conveyed his greetings to NIO from Xiaomi Motors, stating that they sincerely salute NIO. The note mentions that Xiaomi Motors greets Lai Auto at the car show, and many appreciate them for pioneering an EREV, a path that Xiaomi is also venturing into. The NIO CEO understood this and advised against using petrol. It's possible that Xiaomi might follow the EREV path. Now, what's the situation with BYD and Cherry? After NIO Day, the NIO CEO praised BYD and Cherry for their success. One notable point he made was about BYD's impressive performance, surpassing the last 10 years. From 2008 to 2020, BYD has produced an average of 40,000 vehicles every year. But now, they have seen a rapid increase, especially up to 3 million cars annually. So this is quite astonishing. However, we need to see what's behind this. And behind this is politics. It is also the choice of car manufacturing to produce EREV or hybrids. For example, Huawei, Itel, Leap Motor, Shillin, all these car brands produce EREV. These are electric vehicles or arc hybrids that come with a small battery a large gas tank, and a generator. And I think a part of classifying this car as an EREV, meaning a new energy vehicle, is also played by the Chinese government because according to Western standards, you would never consider such a car an electric vehicle. It's not an electric vehicle, but China includes these cars in new energy vehicles, which is quite strange, and they have policies supporting new energy vehicles, which also include these EREV which are basically electric vehicles but mainly run on gas. People have become accustomed to these kinds of cars because they think petrol is necessary for them. And electric vehicles have no significance for them. Their range is limited. There is range anxiety. We have to put some gas to extend the range. That's why it's a range extended vehicle. And this is a deep cycle. Consumers can't let go of petrol, so they buy these EREV and manufacturers see that their EV are not selling. Like Leap Motor, their EV don't sell at all. So they are forced to make EREV, and this validates their decision to go with EREV, and they sell a lot. But it does not contribute at all to the progress towards full electrification, and the truth is that policy supports it. The government has implemented uniform tax exemptions for all new energy vehicles, whether they are electric vehicles or extended range electric vehicles. Some cities have also imposed stringent conditions. You can use an EV license plate, easily obtainable, to purchase an EREV. Despite being considered gas guzzlers with inefficient mileage, they are still being sold. Even though EREV are often perceived as foolish and mere hybrids, people desire these vehicles, believing them to be the next step towards better cars and the future. They think a patrol car with electrification is the right direction, claiming both features are excellent. Many, including myself and numerous NIO owners, argue that EREV should never be categorized alongside electric vehicles. They insist on excluding EREV from the new energy vehicle category, emphasizing the need for pure EV as the global trend dictates. NIO's second factory showcases significant automation visible in videos. Although visiting the factory is possible, filming inside is prohibited 
making it beneficial that NIO allows filming. The CGTN group is also permitted to film inside. The factory, especially factory number two, exhibits extensive automation with numerous robots. Factory number two produces cars like the ET5 and ET5T, maintaining strict tolerance levels. Safety measures are implemented, such as robots automatically stopping if workers are in proximity. The entire manufacturing process, from handling parts to assembling the car frame, is done by robots. It's an impressive sight, showcasing the marvel of robotic automation in car production. And then there are some things that you need for people to install some things. And if they have also installed things, there is a yellow line there, which is really amazing. And if ever you are in front of the yellow line, the conveyor machine stops, and only when you go behind it, it starts moving, ensuring the safety of workers. This is truly astonishing. The factory looks fantastic. All the robots. You know, designing a car is one thing, but how to manufacture cars is even more challenging than designing them. So, NIO has nailed everything. This is a very difficult and challenging process. But it's really saying that NIO cars are fantastic. And when you go and see the factory, it's truly astonishing. They conduct a lot of quality control testing before sending cars to customers. So this is very good. Fantastic. Hopefully, NIO will sell more from now on. And this EREV is just a transition product. And soon, it is hoped that everyone will shift to full EV. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more stock predictions and market insights. Remember to turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. Happy investing and see you in the next video.